power of God uh, to our thinking on the way that we live. But how often do we apply soap and water to our, our outer body to cleanse it? I know some people get lazy about that too. Don't look at your neighbor. Sometimes we want to we want to scrub it off the outside, but you know what? Only the Word can cleanse us from the inside. And you know what? When we get the inside clean, boy, the outside look feels a whole lot better. Amen? Are you with me this morning? Amen. Yes, most assuredly, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins, but it's the washing and the daily applying of God's Word to our lives that keeps us out of the sin business. Praise God. God loves us the way that we are, but He loves us too much to leave us that way. Paul says in Romans 6 and 1, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? See, back there in Paul's day, what was going on, because he was teaching the grace of God, and there was people saying, Well, let's just sin. Let's just get it on so God can really pour out His grace on us. And Paul's saying, that's not what I'm saying. That's not, you know, God forbid, you're, you're losing it here. You're not getting this right. You know, grace is a teacher that keeps us out of the sin business. You know, a perfect heart is a heart that wants to please God. It wants to please God. It's an attitude of a heart that seeks after righteousness. And if a person wants to, wants to. Once again, I believe people do what they want to do. A perfect heart is a heart that wants to please God. And that's why so many times, you know, we just need for our want to to be prayed for. You know, pray for my want to. I want to. You know, it's like that guy that says, I believe that help my unbelief. How many wants to? Amen. I want to please God. In closing this morning, I want you to just imagine, just for a moment here, I want you to imagine yourself as a house. As a house. And God comes along and He wants to rebuild your house. Okay? At first, yes, you realize this old house needs some repair. You know, it needs to be rebuilt. The roof needs to be fixed, it leaks, the guttering needs to be replaced because it's fallen down, the foundation of the house, it needs to be strengthened because it's all wrong. You realize that your house needs to be repaired. But all of a sudden, you realize that God is building something quite different than you thought that He was going to build. I mean, He's not only doing some remodeling, but He, he adds on an extra room. He's putting in a new closet. He's He's building a courtyard out back. He's even adding on a new room upstairs. And you thought the whole time that God was just going to make you into some nice little decent cottage. But the truth is, His blueprints require a palace. Why? Because He's moving in. <laughs> He's the King of Kings and He's come to live in these temples, in these houses. And so, He's planning on moving in Himself. So the command, be ye perfect, it isn't some kind of a hopeless idea, but it's a process. It's a process where we allow the Word of God through the Holy Spirit to reshape us, to remodel us, to remake us. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 that it is a gradual process. And, and I, like what you say, I like what it says in the Message Bible. It puts it this way. When God becomes personally present in your life, a living spirit, you become free from that old legalistic, constricting, powerless form of godliness. Nothing between us and God. Our faces shining with the brightness of His face. And so we are changed into His likeness, much like the Messiah 
our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like Him. That's what happens when we grow into maturity. And that's what it's all about. He's bringing us into a completeness of being more like Him. It's a process that God says, as we allow the Word of God to daily challenge us, we allow the Word of God to examine us, to penetrate our hearts, to search our hearts daily. It's a process that might be long, sometimes painful, sometimes costly. But Paul says in Romans 8.18, these temporary trials and situations are not to even be compared to the lasting and eternal reward that we're going to share in with Christ. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.